Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. Glad to get your phone calls and your emails. And uh, James Buchel joins us now. James, good to have you back on the program. It's good to be back. Listen, we're always glad to see you run for office as well. You want to mention a website or anything like that? Well, um, I am running for Congress against Earl Blumenauer, and the website's www.buchal.com, B-U-C-H-A-L. Now, listen, James, every time I hear something crazy going on with fish, especially salmon, I think i got to call Buchel and find out what the straight skinny is on this. I won't, run the, I won't waste the time running the story, but the story this morning was, wow, we're seeing fantastic runs of salmon up the Columbia River, and I think that's great news. And then, of course, the story features a soundbite from a BPA official who says it's all due to our uh, you know, salmon habitat enhancement efforts. And I think, yeah, you're spending a few hundred million dollars of the public's money every year to go out and you know, do a bunch of things that probably are nice things to do if you're floating on cash. But they're saying that's why we have so many fish coming back. I knew you'd, you'd be able to tell me whether they're uh, you know, pulling that out of their hat or not. Well, I think they might be pulling it out of some other orifice. That's really <laughs> preposterous. <laughs> well, and listen, why don't you do this? Tell folks what salmon enhancement actually amounts to in practical terms. Well, there's so many different kinds, it's difficult to do that. But what they're bragging about is they're ba- bragging about habitat restoration programs that typically will take somebody's ranch and buy it and put it off limits for uh, productive economic use. Or they'll go down in the, in the Columbia River Delta and they'll they'll dig some holes in the mud and, and call it improved flow channel connectivity. Or there's, there's thousands of different kinds of little projects all over the basin, and very few of them have any measurable impact on the fish. And in fact, one of the biggest complaints of the environmentalists, and there's a whole new round of salmon litigation gearing up over it, is that these habitat programs don't have provable benefits. And so you know, to claim that they're responsible for the increase in salmon runs is crazy. And the reason it's crazy is if you look up and down the West Coast, all the rivers are having great runs because what the difference is is that we've had some great ocean conditions, particularly when these fish were going out, you know, two, three, and four years ago. And so the populations are, re- are rebounding strongly everywhere. Now, it's especially funny with respect to fall Chinook because fall Chinook typically don't go very far up rivers and they don't get up into most of the areas where the habitat work is even being done. Yeah, every time I think habitat work, I think, well, they're planting, you know, uh, trees along little streams to shade them and, you know, cool the water down to some some degree that somebody can measure. But but most of that stuff, while it, it all looks good and sounds good, I mean, I, I'm not going to say it's not a good idea to plant more trees or isn't a good idea to, you know, you know clean up a river or take some old creosote-soaked pilings out or whatever that happens to be. But I thought, how in the, how are they crediting? that with bringing back these huge runs uh, and the the original rap on the uh, the Bonneville Power Administration was these dams are going to kill all the fish and it turns out that as long as the ocean's doing well the dams aren't going to kill all the fish no the dams were always a little more than background noise in the larger swings of, of these populations and what happened is there were some real bad ocean conditions and the fish populations plummeted and there was some serious overfishing going on too and at the same time, they were ratcheting the hatchery production down slowly, and and all of a sudden there was a crisis, and everybody looked around, and the person with the most money at the table was the dams, so it must have been their fault so they could fund everybody else. And I also ask you about hatcheries, and I said, aren't the hatcheries, uh, shouldn't they get some or a lot of the credit for this return? And you said, well, no, the hatcheries are kind of a drop as well, but... I remember there was a study that the tribes did uh, probably 20 years ago where they said, is it possible that by having hatcheries and producing hatchery fish that will enhance the natural fishery? Because, you know, even if the state of Oregon doesn't find all the returning hatchery fish and beat them to death with billy clubs the way they used to (laughs) or electrocute them or kill them with carbon monoxide, and if you think I'm making this up, look it up. James will tell you this is how they kill all the returning hatchery fish. Because they're 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 not of the pro- they're the same genetic fish as the other fish, but I, I remember asking a scientist, well, if two fish manage to escape the billy clubs and the electrocution, the carbon monoxide, and they go upstream and do what fish do uh, at that time of the year and spawn, uh, what do you consider their offspring? He said native, and that that tribal study, if I remember right, said it actually enhances the native fishery. You know, because they go up, mix it up with the other salmon, and pretty soon you got a lot of baby salmon, smolts. So. It sounds to me like if we had a really active hatchery uh, program and weren't ratcheting it down, but we're ratcheting it up, we might have even more fish given the right conditions out in the ocean. Am I wrong? 
No, I think that's I think that's probably true. And and we do produce an awful lot of hatchery fall chinook. We produced about 68 million smolts uh, last year that were all fall smolts out of the 140 million total. And uh, and lo and behold, we got lots of fall chinook. Uh, but in terms of what makes the year to year swings, uh, it's 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 the hatchery. The hatcheries haven't improved in some demonstrable or <laughs> measurable way. See, James, one of my big frustrations is I, I know people who are TV news directors and other folks, and I'll say to them, you guys are biased. And they'll say, no, no, show us the bias. Show us where we hate Republicans and love Democrats. And I said, no, the bias is more subtle than that. I'm willing to bet, and I haven't done it yet, but if I went home tonight and got on the Internet and looked at the stories done by, you know, the various television stations around Oregon on, you know, these developments, these wonderful runs of salmon, they'd all have the same BPA guy telling you it's because of government programs. You know, and, 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 you know, that's why you have the fish. Like, all good things come from government. I know there are people who believe that, but when you put that in front of people, they go, yeah, I understand the salmon's coming back. The BPA sure saved them. And then it becomes part of the popular consciousness. And when somebody like you runs for office and says, hold on, it's not that. It's other things that they don't even control because the federal government doesn't yet control the Pacific Ocean. Uh, they go, no, 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 no. I heard it on TV. It's all the government's. Uh, yeah. The government made all the fish come back. No, what we should be saying is, you know, we had an entire aluminum industry in this region that we drove out through higher electric rates because we decided to blow billions of dollars on salmon programs that essentially accomplished nothing. And it was all based on these agitators. I mean, there were press releases and articles, you know, 10, 15 years ago, all the salmon will be extinct by 2015. You know, and, and these people were believed and, and massive amounts of resources were misallocated based on their false testimony or idiotic testimony, one or the other. And now we have electricity rates as high as we do in, in states like Oklahoma, where they have to factor in the cost of digging coal out of the ground and tr putting it on a train and burning it in plants where they have fuel costs. We have the same electricity costs as they do with free energy because of all this idiot, you know, spending, and, and it's killing the Northwest economy. We should, we should be the, the world leaders in energy-intensive, you know, high-quality jobs, and instead we have people, you know, drilling holes in the mud and calling it habitat restoration and running around telling lies to newspapers. Well, I'll tell you what, I want to see those things change, and people should realize we, we would still have inexpensive electricity, but then again, part of the agenda was if you have cheap electricity from the dams, then you can't very well justify all the solar plants, you know, the solar cell programs and the windmill programs and, you know, the alternative energy programs, because, you know, who's going to buy that when you can buy cheap Bonneville power for a retail price of five or six cents a kilowatt hour? It, yep. it, you'd never sell it. That's another gigantic misallocation of resources based on misrepresentations. I mean, it, it, wind power is sort of fundamentally stupid because instead of building one whole electric system, you have to build two, one for when the wind's blowing and one, it, one for when it isn't. Wow. Listen, uh, how's, the run, how's the run going for Congress? Oh, it's all right. I mean, we, we, we try and change one mind at a time. It's, it's very difficult because I'm running, as you know, in a very close-minded district. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are. And, and you, know, you know what I think would be a great—my uh, wife and I were wondering last night, uh, with the president taking us off to what the White House is now finally today calling a war— I keep wondering where Code Pink is and when they're going to start showing up at the uh, election rallies for Blumenauer and DeFazio and Bonamici and, and Schrader and say, we're against the war and your president is taking us to war like they did with Bush, because I suspect they're not going to pressure these guys at all, guys and gals. No, it's, it's, it was a remarkable thing to notice how the, the, the day that Obama was elected, those women who used to stand in the park downtown, they were all gone because... You know, whatever, whatever, whatever the, the, the Democrats want to do is just fine, even if it's got exactly the same thing they were complaining at the Republicans about. It's, it's, it's remarkable. It's a staggering amount of hypocrisy. Well, mention your website again so people can help you out and find out what your campaign's all about. Sure, www.buchal.com, B-U-C-H-A-L. James, thanks very much. I appreciate your insights. No problem. Back in just a moment with First Amendment Friday and your phone calls. You're listening to The Lars Larson Show. 